Right. Ah, there we are. It's recording now. Okay. Okay, so we're on the woman who shopped, okay, uh, from yesterday. Did Joe read through it in its entirety last night, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So let's just start off with a few kind of um, general questions here. So what's the purpose of shopping, do you think? Uh, to you, first of all, Fionn, what, what do you think? Why do we shop? Um, to get anything that you need. Yeah, it, it, it can be. Yeah, just to get get, get things that you need. Um, what do you think, Nadine? Why do we shop? Um, to get things you need or want. Ah. Now, what's the difference between uh, need and want, would you say, Nadine? Uh, one's a necessity and one isn't. Yeah. Oh, shopping for necessities, that, that, that sort of chimes with the times at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a desire here and um obviously we're not get daniel in the room at the moment to sort of put the put the the male perspective here but do you do you think is there a gender divide between males and females and issue of shopping yeah to a point yeah to a point yeah Fiona, what do you think um i'd say yeah a little bit but i think like the boys around our age are just the same. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 thinking back to yeah, Oliver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, in year eleven. <laughs> he was very specific about his he shopping was, habits, wasn't he? <laughs> every time it was a known clothes day, he would literally wear as many designer things that he could. Yeah. <laughs> He, he did, yeah. Oh Lord, and it was the change was quite rem <laughs> remarkable, wasn't it? But you see, every time it was, yeah. So that just goes to show you, um, it's not just a, a, a female attitude sort of thing. Uh, good. Now, um, as it says here, um, as it, it, it begins to turn a bit uh, surreal uh, as as a poem here, we can see it as a uh, an attack on that sort of. Um, Western consumerism and you know addiction to shopping and all those sorts of things. But first of all, I want to get your kind of as we did the, with the first one, the Long Queen. Um, I'd like your initial react. Once you'd read it, I'd like your initial reactions uh, to the poem. Okay, so so if we could start with you, Fionn. What was your initial um, re reaction to this poem and response to it? Um, like the first bit, I was wondering where she was getting all the money from. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, how is because she was buying like a sauna and a swimming pool and everything. And then, did she just leave leave home or? Well, I, I, what what happens isn't it? This is it, she becomes. It consume, I mean, it's addicted, isn't it, to shopping, and eventually it takes over. And again, like anything from this, I mean, it's this idea with an addiction, you're going to lose everything. You know, you gain for a while, but then eventually you're just going to lose it. And again, it's that idea she becomes homeless. And then it, it, it does go that surreal way because she then turns into a shop, doesn't she? <laughs> as, as quite often happens <laughs> in the second half of the poem. Yeah, but it, it, it is that idea and about um, you know, addiction and... Um, Oh, which the addiction catches up. Nadine, what about you? How did, what was your initial reaction once you'd read it through? Um, that like it kind of got the best of her. Ah, yeah, yeah. I think it's bound to happen. Yeah. Do you th is is Duffy making a a fair point? Do you think, um, Nadine? And I'll, same sort of question I'll, I'll ask to you as well, Fionn, in a minute. Um, but Nadine, first, do you think that the point that um, if we if if we look at this as being an attack on you know consumerism, 
just going off the scale. Um, do you think that Duffy's got a fair point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you want to elaborate on yeah? Why? Why do you think that? Um, because what was the question again? <laughs> Has can do you think that Duffy's got a a fair point with them um, saying that you know consumerism just buying for the sake of buying you know almost like a sort of greed um that she's got a fair point about that. Yeah, because if you've got the money, then, like, you can spend it. But just, she just did it a bit excessively. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> <Hard. What? laughs> Where do you think it got excessive, Nadine? Um, when she started becoming homeless. <laughs> That's a step too far, yeah. Yes. Fionn, what about you? What do you think? Do you think that Duffy's got a fair point that she's making here in her poem? Uh, yeah, I think so, because it didn't get way out of hand. <laughs> yeah, OK. And, and so what we can think about here um, as well. Um, it, 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 we're looking at here, this is poetry, and there's, there's quite a few of them in here uh, as social commentary, but they seem to have that female bias. Um, because we're looking at one about beauty and diet as well, sort of thing, which again tend to get pigeonholed as sort of a uh, female concerns, female issues, that sort of thing. Okay, did any of the poems shock you at all? No, none of the language that she used, none of that shock you, no. OK, right, fair enough. So um, if we look at the title, The Woman Who Shot, um, does that sort of spark off any ideas? Uh, does that make you think of any anyone else or any other type of um, literary genre at all? Oh, so Nadine sent a message. Oh, right. Um, Her Wi-Fi mm. is like playing up today. Oh, is our Wi-Fi playing up again? <gasps> oh, no. Oh, we could, it could be down to just you and me, Fionn. <laughs> oh, I think that's yeah. Oh, you're back. Um, let me just check. Ah, Daniel, you're in the room. Good man. You are here. Hadn't noticed you join. Boom. Right, that's that. So not to worry the idea, and obviously just follow as much as you can. Uh, and then obviously you've got the, the recording that you can catch up with as well, sort of thing. Any bits that you might miss, sort of thing. So I understand that. So we've got the title, uh, Women Are Shocked. And again, here we have, she, she seems to be de defined by what she does. Uh, just like we had in The Long Queen. Um, you know, again, that, that's, um, you know, it's defined also um another common a link here use of the definite article um
And even though not just have a name, it does make her specific. It's the woman who shot rather than a woman who shot um, sort of idea. Um, Fionn, what do you notice about from the title, then going on to the first line of the poem? So we've got the woman who shot, and then it's went out with a silver shilling. It's like, can we, is it like on John Mint book for the title? Yeah, that is it, exactly. It needs to flow on, doesn't it? Good, 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 good. So, yeah, we have it that you know, we've got there. The, the title itself, you know, the, the woman who shot, um, it is that idea of being um, sort of um, fairy tale like. Um, and then, as you, as you just rightly said there, Fionn, it's that idea that they've got to, you've got to flow, right? You've got to continue reading, and you, get, you jump sort of straight into this tale. And so we have the woman who, whoops, the woman who shot. Uh, Went out with a silver shilling, willing to buy, bought an apple, red as a first love's heart, bright as her eye, had plenty of change, purchased a heart with a brim, and walked with a suitor under its shadow and ditched him. I'm going to have to keep coming, sorry, I'm going to keep coming to you, Fionn, because I know that you're one that's live and active sort of thing. What, what did you notice in uh, anything of interest in that opening verse there? Uh, any sort of poetic techniques being being used that you know you can see that are familiar techniques from Duffy. Um, like metaphors. Yeah, we've got the metaphors coming in. Yeah. Anything else? What about? Do, do, do. We've got buy, bought. Oh, is yeah. it alliteration? Yeah, again, and again, we've got the silver shilling, buy, bought, and again, so we'll get an alteration and a little bit of um, listing, you know, at the start of it, almost like listing going on there as well. Um, and again, it sort of fits in. Um, with that idea no way and then we have the um obviously we have we have the silver shilling what sort of um what sort of image is created with that fion you know i've got a silver shilling um like shiny kind yeah, of yeah that's it it's um, yeah isn't it and does it not just think of the idea you know when you, you go back and think about it as a small child, you know, you get your, your you get pocket money, whatever from, you know, you get the pound coin sort of thing and you think I'm rich, I'm rich, that sort of idea. But it is, it's that idea of, you know, it's it's bright, it's shiny, it's almost sort of um, mesmerising. Um, you know, that, that sort of bewitching idea, you know, you get this, the silver, you just get the silver shilling. And then there's choice being made by her as well, isn't it? Because she is willing to buy. Okay. So in her part, yeah, it shows that choice being made. Um, oops, come from this side. Okay. So we have personal choice there. Um, and then it's the first thing that she buys is an apple red as first love's heart. Um, now, we, when we have apples in literature, what do we begin, what story do we immediately begin to think of? Snow White. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. So you're thinking Snow White and any other one, one a bit older than Snow White? Um... You did RS, didn't you, Fionn? Oh, um... Yeah, 
Go on, go on, go on. With Adam and Eve. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're thinking about Eve's temptation, um, you know, with the apple. Yeah. Um, and again, this there's loads of puns within this poem too. Um, you know, she buys an apple, red as first love's heart, bright as her eye, had plenty of change. Yeah, and again, you know, it's out from the shilling. Um, now, if I just, um, you know, you can't, what do we, whoops. Have you heard of the phrase about being, whoop, let me make it a bit smaller so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, boom, boom. Oops, don't want that one, an arrow please. So it's saying bright, uh, uh, bright as our eye. Now it's the apple. Do you know the expression? Uh, apple of my eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if someone is the apple of your eye, what does that mean? It's like someone you love. Yeah, it's about love and it, it, it's something you desire, isn't it? That again, it's that sense of desire and love. Um, and you, it, it's still a little bit ambiguous at the moment, um, who or what it is that she wants and she loves. Um, uh, and so it goes out and she goes out and she then purchases a hat with a brim, walked with a suitor under its shadow and ditched him. So what happens by the end of that verse? What's she, what's she done? She's not with him anymore. No. Uh, why do you think she's ditched him, Fionn? I don't know. You know. Okay. Are you able to um, give us an idea at the moment, Nadine? Are you, are you are you managing to hear us okay, or are you? If you if you don't, I, I suppose you'll be quiet. I'm guessing. But uh, yeah, any idea why she ditches him, Nadine? Um, I. I don't know either. Yeah. Uh, do you think maybe, because again, all of this is about sort of consumerism and, and whatnot. And again, it, it's, it's the first one that she walks out with, but then maybe she realises that she can do better. She can kind of trade up. It's that whole thing to do with, you know, consumerism, isn't it? You get, first of all, you get what you can afford and then you keep going up to the next one and the next one and the next one. And it's always about sort of seeing which one that you're happiest with. Yeah. And so again, by verse two, she's developing. You know, she's saved up a pound. So the the um, the, mo the money is, is increasing in size. Now we started off with a shilling, but now you know we're out to a pound. But it become a, a pound quickly becomes a five, a tenner. Haggled the price of a dancing dress down to a snip. Spent the remainder on shoes. Danced from the house down the street. Tapped to the centre of town where the sales had commenced. What sort of image has been created of the the persona in this poem, Fionn, where she um, gets the gets the dress and dances down the street and taps her way to the sales? How does she I, sound as a person? It's what is what is making her happy. Yeah. Time, all the things. Yeah, that's it. It's what what, motiv what motivates her, what drives her. Yeah. Good, good. Oops.
And we can also think at that point as well, you know, where it says tapped to the oops, um, to the sales. Let's go to that. Um, that that pun with tapped because it can be obviously it's dancing. It could be tap dancing. Or what else could she be tapping? If you think about buying something, what else might you tap? Her credit card. Yeah, yeah, I'll tap it. Yeah. You know, it's that idea of tapping a card. So again, there's a, again, it's what Duffy does a lot of within this poem here. Um, we get the little puns uh, where, it, where the language is a bit um, um, ambiguous and you can have more than one interpretation here. And it's, and it's what motivates her, isn't it? It's what, what drives her life. It's the sales, off to the sales. Yeah. And so she begins in the next verse, apply for a job, for the wage and the bonus, blew it on clothes, wanted a wedding, a wedding dress, groom, married him, wanted a honeymoon, went on one, looked at the gold of a ring as it flashed in the sun, um, flew away to flew away home to furnish each room of the house, shuffle his plastic with hers, deal them out in the shops for cutlery, crockery, dishwasher, bed linen, TV sets, three-piece suites, stereos, microwaves, telephones, curtains and mirrors and rugs, shrugged at the cost then fixed up a loan, filled up the spare room with boxes of merchandise and open cartons, overstuffed bags, went onto the internet and shopped in America, all over Europe, tapping on credit card numbers all night, ordering swimming pools, caravans, saunas, when they arrived, stacked up in the lawn, she fled, took to the streets where the, where the lights from the shop ran like paint in the rain. Now, all, it's verse after verse there just begins to, to flow into the next. What do you notice about the pace and the rhythm of the poem from really from um, those sort of three, four verses that I just read to you there? What do you notice about that? Has it, has it stayed the same as it was at the beginning or has it began to change? And if it's changing, what do you think that change is reflecting? It's like speeding up, maybe showing yeah. that how it's kind of her addictions getting out of control. Good, yeah, spot on, Fionn. Yeah, so it's beginning to to match that addiction as it gets faster and faster and faster. You say more out of her control. Now, if we take it back to the um, third verse there, so um, we have that demanding, isn't it? Wanted a wedding, uh, wanted a honeymoon. Um, that idea of she's demanding things now, isn't it? It's no longer just okay to have them. These are demands that she begins to make um, and, and, and she, that have to be granted. Yeah. Wanted also makes her sound a little bit what do you think, Fionn? Like kind of childish. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it, it is that sort of, yeah, infantile sort of, you know, almost like a stamp of the foot. <laughs> Um, also, we can think about it as being, it's about expectation, isn't it? Um, it's about that idea that um, the more money you, ha you have, the more you kind of want, isn't it? Money money tends to equate to things that we that we collect, that we buy, whether we need them or not, you know, and it, it, as, you, as your sort of disposable income becomes greater and greater, you just think, oh, I'll do that now because I can. Um, it's that that kind of whole idea. Um, the fact that she blows her wages, what does that begin to suggest about her personality as well, Fionn? Um, like she's not thinking about saving anything. She's not really yeah. thinking it through. She's just yeah. doing what Good. she wants. Yeah. Um, it's that sort of a oops, colloquial expression. Um, 
Yeah, um, as you say, it's it's that it's, it's the lack of thought that she's putting into anything, and so no no, no thought to consequences here, and it, you know it's just a, it's a need a necessity that that's taken over her completely. Um, so we get that she wanted the wedding, she gets the wedding dress, a groom married him. And again, there's that sort of real sense of detachment in this as well, isn't it? There's, there's no sense of that she's not married for love. It's just, it's almost like it's for status, isn't it? Um, and then you get, gets, I mean, it's almost like she's getting the set. She, she gets the wedding, she gets the honeymoon, uh, looks at the golden ring as it flashed in the sun and flew away home to furnish each room of the house. And so it's, it's moved. By this stage, it begins to move out, doesn't it? It's no longer about the in, individual. It, it's individual needs. It's about you know creating something that, that it, it's far bigger and, and, and beginning to overwhelm her. Um, the idea about shuffling plastic with hers does that make you think that image make you think of anything else, Fion? Shuffling. Think of the shape and size of cards. Um. Or think about it in another context. Don't think of them as being credit cards that she's shuffling. If she were shuffling just like cards, playing cards, what would that make her begin to sound like? Like a magician? Um, maybe a magician or some, who else uses cards, playing cards? Mm -hmm. To do with money, win or lose, high stakes. Oh, like um, oh, what's it called? The casino. Can't remember the name. That's it. Yeah, Daniel, the casino, the gam. You were thinking about a gambler, isn't it? She's beginning to gamble now, almost, isn't it, with the money? Yeah. Well done, Daniel. I heard you there. You know, when we think about addictions and and whatnot. I mean, that 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 ties in beautifully with it. Um, so she shuffles her plastic with hers. She and again deals them out. Again, that again, that's the idea of the of the gambler. You know, shuffling and dealing uh, for cutlery, crockery, dishwashers, bed linen, TV sets, three piece suites. You know, it's just a list of things, isn't it? A list of things that she needs or, or things that she needs. Um, the ambivalent attitude continues as she shrugs at the cost. Um, and then when she, and again, as you're talking about, you know, it's when she runs out of actual physical money and the credit cards, it goes up to the, to the next stage, isn't it? It's about getting a loan then. And then filling up the spare room with boxes, you know, that idea that, you know, a room has to be filled. And it's this idea that she just buys and buys and buys and, and just, you know, fills up these rooms with things that she doesn't actually need. And um, another big change um, that begins to take place is with the internet. She goes on to the internet and shopped. Whoops. Undo that. Whoop. Into red. Boom. Down. Um, and that idea that when she gets onto the internet, um, and it's you know it says, um, and she shopped in America, all over, all over Europe. Where's her shopping gone now? On. Like worldwide. Yeah, that's it.
And this is where we begin to see that, and we begin to recognise that um, Duffy actually, maybe she's making a point about society at large, rather than the, the individual here. This is about, uh, you know, that's a rampant global consumerism take, taking over the world, where you don't just go down the high street into your local shops. Now you can just, you know, shop to your heart's content on the internet day after day, hour after hour, 24 seven, that sort of idea that's taken place. Um, we get that return of the tapping again, as she was, remember she tapped her way to the sales. It's now, tapping her credit card numbers um, all night. And again, it, isn't it the things that she orders now, isn't it, that they become more and more extravagant, like you were saying at the top of the lesson there, Fionn, you know, she's buying swimming pools, caravans, saunas, you know, all these sorts of things. And then there is, there is the change. And she fled. Um, it's almost that sort of rec that's the point of recognition where she thinks, oh, this is out of control. Uh, and she's you know taken to the streets where the lights from the shops ran like paint in the rain. Um, and it says, and pressed her face to the pain uh, of the biggest and the best. The happy shoppers were fingering silk, holding cashmere close to their cheeks, dancing with fun. And again, an echo of earlier in the poem, dancing with fuck, and she slept there, curled up in the doorway, six bag, shopping bags at her feet. Okay, so, boom. You know, and again, we, we see that sort of earlier echo. Remember when she danced and she tapped her way to the high street sales. Now it's others. That are involved in the dance, you know, she's kind of, she's outside uh, and, you know, she's become homeless. Uh, she's living in the streets and she just, uh, what do you call it? Sleeping in doorways. Uh, but she has the, and again, the shopping bags now at her feet. What do they contain, Fionn, do you think, the six shopping bags at her feet? Um, hmm? Maybe like her belongings. Yeah, that's what her life has been reduced to now. Six shopping bags, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, I mean, whereas before she was just buying, 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 filling up the house, filling up the spare room, all of those things. Now, all her worldly goods and possessions contained in six shopping bags. Yeah. And then um, this is where, the, where, the, where the, the poem now changes. And from this section on, uh, this is where we have this surrealism take place, where she becomes a living embodiment. <laughs> Of a shop, yeah. Now, um, what do you think is going on with this, uh, Fionn? Um, why do you think Duffy has 
the character, the persona in, in, the, in the poem suddenly transform into a shop, literally into a shop. What could she be possibly maybe be trying to say, do you think? When I first read it, I thought it was trying to say that she was like a prostitute. Oh, very good. Yeah. Why do you think that? Um, Like, that's what she has to do now because she's got no other way of getting money. Yeah, the, the, there's that. And also that you could think... Yeah, and, and again, it's that kind of idea that she sort of uh, prostituted herself um, to sales and purchases, isn't it? You know, it's all been about yeah. money, anything to do to get my to get that next hit, to get that next fix of whatever it is that she needs to buy. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, so you said you first thought that. Did you think anything else uh, as you had time to maybe reflect upon it, that it could possibly be something else that Duffy's hinting at? Uh, um, maybe just like trying to show how like addiction can affect you like she feels like yeah. she's literally a shop now so it's kind of yeah yeah kind of and so she, yeah so she's become consumed by what you know she was consuming yeah that is it good yeah Um, and so, yeah, it's this idea that, you know, the, the addiction itself, and again, it's the same for any addiction, isn't it? You know, it's consumed her and she's now become, and she now reflects what it is that was her driving force in life. You know, this idea that, you know, she she adored shopping so much um, that, 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 you know, that she, that she's literally becoming a living uh, embodiment of it. Yeah, and so it begins, you know, stone cold when she woke, she was stone, it was concrete and glass, her eye windows squinting back at the light, her brow, a domed roof, her thoughts neon, flashing on and off, vague in the daylight, and she seemed to be kneeling. And so we're having this transformation of her. Now, if, if it becomes surreal um, and she is transforming into a shawl, what else, what other technique, Fionn, could be being used here by Duffy when she's using a human being to represent something? Like personification. That is it, well done. Yeah, and so we're getting a sort of human face on, on, on the impact of it. But by the same token, but because she's coming becoming this store, it, it also sort of dehumanises her, doesn't it? And detaches her because she's stone cold. She was stone. And so it, it's, you know, it's making her less human. You know, she was concrete. It's this harsh cold environment that she has. Um, Duffy again plays about with well kind of worn sort of poetic um, conceits here. You know, she talks about um, with, with her eyes were windows squinting back. You know, you can go all the way back to Shakespeare, Shakespeare talking about the eyes being the window to the soul. Um, well, the windows to this soul is pretty grim. You know, I mean, we see the impact that it's taken upon her. Yeah.
Um, and 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 it's what left it's what left is left of her after she's been you know sort of spat out by this consumerist world that she's lived in and she's uh, sort of ridden for the for the um, for the years when she had the money. Now it, it, this is the sort of the downside of it, the other side of it, um, and she's cold and detached. Yeah. You know, these are not so. Sort of, you know, the the stone and the glass that you know is, is referred to here as well. These are not um, sort of warm materials here. Uh, and again, with the glass, obviously, she just reflects, reflects back on her. You know what what is shown in their own life, but also reflecting again the other consumers that are coming uh, to do go down the exact same route as she has done. Okay. Very good work there. Right, well, it's coming up to 25.2 now, one. And I think that's a, that's a good a place as any to pause with it, with this poem at the moment. Uh, you did a, a sterling job today, Fionn, uh, answering all my questions. Well done, you. Thank you. I think, you, I think you'll be due a merit for this. I'll get that popped onto <laughs> ePress later on today. Um, and hopefully uh, the Dean and, and Daniel are able to follow this at various points too. Um, obviously, if we do get issues with, with um, what do we call it, internet connections and all that with Wi-Fi, and obviously when Nadine having so many on the go in her house, it could get a struggle at times. And also, I'm thinking again, uh, Daniel, with you with the time differences, when again it's not appropriate for you to join on, just you know, just catch up on the, on the recorded lesson that you'll see in the the department's YouTube channel again, um, and that you've missed sort of thing, you can go back over. Okay, so thank you. Um, thank you for this week. That's week one done. Off to have some lunch, those of us in the UK at the moment. Um, and uh, have a good weekend and get a break from your devices. I'm saying that to all my classes. Get away from the squareness of the, of the devices for a couple of days at least. And I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ah, thank you, Nadine. Good to hear your voice again. Okay. Bye. <laughs> right. Bye. Thank okay. Thanks, Daniel.